it's one of those things where we have to understand the legal process of doing business in a country and we can't do the stupidity of what Garvey Town and other crazy people have done by trying to wing it or by trying to use traditional laws and everything. Uh, we're looking to meet up with serious investors as far as others uh, like ourselves uh, in the African diaspora. And in order for us to really build this energy, we have to lay down a foundation that's very just righteous and upfront and just clear. Uh, because I look at different people out there trying to do things. I look at all the negative videos about Ghana getting land and people tend to just not look themselves in the mirror and take any level of accountability and things like that. When, when things go wrong and it's irritated bad news on uh, online. So um, after the, the, the fall and the death of Garvey Town, uh, our goal was literally to just make sure that we do this the right way and then don't listen to nobody's sweet talking and nice gesture and uh, all the stuff they got going. So, um, and another thing to add to that also is um, the fact that um, we have shown all of us that we can actually get this done by just having an organized flow of uh, energy. So. That's what uh, Richard and Kwabna uh, really just honestly just uh, dare to do. Um, you know, they're there just running around doing all the things that we agreed on and just appreciate that energy because we're showing people that this can be done and we need to take accountability if you want to get anything done. Like one of the things that I just want to share briefly and I'm not uh, speaking bad about anyone, um, you know, uh, we see, you know, I'm not sure if people see these things like uh, Omar Johnson is one of those people that I used to, you know, th that, I've listened to him for about a good 10 years and um, kind of watch other people out there that are doing things and kind of learn from what they're doing and kind of try to do things in a more way where we can kind of make it work because one of the things, as soon as you have certain flaws and you make certain mistakes, people are ready to tear you apart and things like that. And sometimes when those things happen, we all have to take accountability for our shortcomings and us not doing right. Like Garvey Town, um, it's hard for anyone to type in Garvey Town without seeing a connection to uh, their unfortunate, um, unorganized situation. It's just, it's written in the history and uh, that's what I do here as an administrative person. I put things in the history and the search engines so we can just put information out there to connect with the right people and to make sure that this work and those who cross us and, and try to you know, do, do certain things to us, we try to put things out there to educate people about making better decisions and organizing themselves. And in the case of um, Omar Johnson, I'm not going to do that to Garvey Town. Let's turn around and make a bunch of videos about them. But he has people making a bunch of videos of him uh, consistently. And I'm not here to just pick sides of anything. I'm just saying that we don't want to be that energy of just being, um, you know, doing certain things where people can look at our flaws. Like right now, we roll in strong as a strong, like, you know, a strong military unit that's just you know, propelling without, uh, without people just being all in our business. Everything we do is pretty much private and all of us are investors and things like that. And the donations that we, ac we have accepted is very small over the years. And that has just mainly just been spent in Ghana because that's what we do with money. We try to make sure that we just keep the flow of resources that we have in the hands of black owned operation and everything that we've been doing for this business and even for other business that I have, Africa for Africans in Ghana, it is represent that. So it's uh, important that we just be completely transparent with each other. Um, I did mention to everybody that we paid for the land. So it's like, I'm not just telling that we paid for the land. I provided all of the receipts that uh, we sent, um, all of the receipts that Nana Haiti sent us, but also I sent um, all of the, uh, the transactions for other things. And I have all of the, you know, naturally all of the transfers that I sent Nana Haiti, but since he sent me the receipt, it was just better to show you the receipt. But, uh, and then we show that we can pay for the land. So I've observed what Garvey Town has told me that they can't get people to do this, they can't get people to do this and that. And so is other groups of people, but we gotta uh, stop that as a people. I mean, it's an insult to us that make it seem like we're just incompetent. And I right. check those things. It's kind of just like, um, I'm from Jamaica. I don't speak with a strong Jamaican accent. I don't, I don't accept the stereotypes. Now maybe the, 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 the ganja smoking stereotype, that's, uh, that's fine with me. I don't take that personal. Um, but the other stereotypes, as far as we as a people, is this, is this illiterate and it's is stupid. Uh, the best thing that we can do is honestly find, we live in a world full of black people on the continent and everywhere else. And my goal is only to deal with those of us that want to do this the right way and build this. So I don't ever communicate with anyone outside of what we're doing. Everything we need is private because we can't let people that don't have our best interest to infiltrate and just 
be on some other stuff to where they just more of drama. You know what I mean? It's like, you should want to see us build Africa as a future of African people that will empower us across the entire planet and make Africa great again and not just be the talkers and things. You know, like one of the issues I've had is just all these people that's raising black fists, talking about black power, black this, uh, since I started studying um, you know, in the last uh, 16 years. And, you know, it's, it's like we have to go beyond the studying and being sharp and smart and being prolific speakers. And that's what I also use in the essence of Umar Johnson. So it's like, if we're gonna speak big, we gotta deliver big, if we, you know, and things like that. So everything that we just did uh, is set on the recording where my goal is literally just to honestly just uh, share it with um, the rest of the people that I have. I have a list of 200 people that wanna join us. And I felt like a lot of people didn't make a commitment because of all of the shenanigans and stupidity that has happened uh, you know, from whether I was working with Fiancra or, uh, or Garvey Town, I still have even people send me emails, uh, like one person sent me emails, insults at Imacus, blaming her, and she, she didn't do anything. She was just like me. She's there trying to help that project. And unfortunately, some of us, our names have been attached to unfortunate situations like myself, but I tell people the only thing I've honestly did was organize our people to bring them in front of presentations and uh, try to just work with the people that were presenting land opportunities. And that's why I even more so step in my game up to show everyone that we're honest about what we're doing because it's, it is, it's just one or two incidents happen and next you know people, like in, in essence of Omar Johnson, I, I think I count like 10 different people that make YouTube videos specifically about him and discredit him and I'm not taking up for him or I'm not against him. I'm just saying we all have to take accountability for everything. Uh, including, uh, you know, so um, I just want us to just do the right thing and just get it done right because it's a shame that we as a people have been in the diaspora where Kwame and Kuma and a whole lot of other people and then you have chiefs that's offered us hundreds of acres of land and thousands of acres of land and now you ask yourself where's the community represent the African diaspora that's returning and also, you know, us returning is not us just trying to be separate. Us returning is helping the common ones of us that are honestly, you know, maybe you have like $5,000 that they could work with, or even $1,000. I've talked to people that say, yo, I'm on my last few thousand dollars and I'm making this move to Africa. And it's like, you know, I'm gonna just chance it because I just don't wanna be anymore. And you know, I, I give them our best advice. And that's why I tell people when any video I do, uh, I don't need you to pay me a consultation charge, call me, talk to me. Uh, I've been going to Africa uh, for the last, um, you know, since 2004 and I've just been uh, organizing data so where I can help the rest of us and us work on things organically. So my goal is to get more and more of those people to use some of their money as you know, the investment to get the land and also to help them connect in a community where we can share more of everything. And just like we shared all the costs that, it, uh, has to, that Richard has to get paid and everyone else that we have to deal with. And individually, it was just, you know, it would break most of us, uh, uh, including myself, uh, because you know, all of us, uh, as much money as everyone think we make in America, you got ridiculous expenses and you got people like these crooked people in my county jacking up the water bill, jacking up the, the gas bill and all kind of this unfair craziness. So even that's a situation where we're gonna have a good presentation next week to where we can talk about all of our sustainable options and things like that. So it's just me just organizing this to where we're, we can talk about everything for this a whole one year period of our connections and uh, just going over everything and build a foundation of this could happen. So. My goal is to share this call with the others uh, that are just been watching, just like I share the receipts uh, uh, with them, uh, the, AKA the financial report, and let them know that uh, we have everything set to where um, we've organized. You know, myself, Richard, Kwabina, and Nana, you know, we consider ourselves men of honor that want to represent our people and do everything for our own brothers and sisters to make it work. And we're also here to protect us and, from the rest of the vultures that are our own people that look just like us, that are wolf in sheep clothing, and, you know, and those are people like Garvey Town, Fianca, and other people who literally don't want to do the work. So I'm committed and I just want to raise the level of us doing certain things so I can raise the level of get more people involved in doing the different things that has to be done, especially in a committee uh, phrase to where we can build what we need to build and make it work. So that's what you have seen. Uh, one year of our accomplishments where people say that we can't do this, uh, this uh, nobody wants to do anything with us and things like that. 
we're proving them all wrong and we're going to prove the rest of the people all wrong that we can do this as a people and by us doing that that's where we're going to get more and more support because i really believe deep in my heart there's a lot of other black people that are watching us and they are scared to death to do anything uh with us because of what other people have done that speak the same way or similar uh and things like that so i always want to differentiate myself between myself and all these other people uh so i kind of just operate in a not in an isolated mode but in a a private specific mission mode and that's why on the, the overview you have things like uh, we don't allow certain people in um, our, our community and it's just pretty much it's for straight uh, pan-african family people who believe in the straight African nation building and us supporting black owned enterprise and us being our best and doing things at the highest level with no reasons or excuses and just getting it done uh, and it's, and the only thing that I would say about that is we as a people could have get a, gotten a lot of things done in Africa, but we tend to focus too much on America. We build everything, all our struggles, our fight for America. And as someone that's born in Jamaica and, uh, and is uh, from being from the outside coming in, I'm just, just here to connect with my brothers and sisters, just like my other uh, African national brothers and sisters and other black people from different parts of, of the diaspora and say, hey, let's use some of the best resources that we as a black people have, which is in America and organize even a 1% to 5% energy because we know most of these zombies are going to stay brainwashed and they're going to go down with the ship and they're going to keep on fighting for Biden or, uh, or Trump or whatever other people that they throw at them and everything. But uh, we as a people, if we invest more in investing on the African continent, we can make Africa uh, great again. As a matter of fact, I'm about to redesign Trump Magna Hat with red, black, green, and gold and put make Africa great again and push an energy uh, you know, and things like that. So it's like these people want to, pay to play their psychological games. I'm with it, you know, where they got people running from the Democratic devil plantation system to the Republican Democratic, uh, Republican uh, devil plantation system. And then, you know, you have all these black people fighting each other about that my slave master is better than your slave master. And my slave ma master did this and my slave master did this. And it becomes a level of stupidity like that. So we're the force that's really just doing something uniquely just different and say, hey, uh, you know, let's make this happen. And uh, from when I started studying uh, in 2003 to where we just started organizing study groups and connecting with other people, these are the things that I was sharing with my brothers and sisters. Like, let's not just continue the, the legacy of just us wasting resources and not living up to our highest potential of corporate economics. And let's literally put the work in and do it. So that's been my quest on us traveling to the African continent, trying to see different countries, because Ghana is the sixth country I went to. You know, and Tanzania is going to be the 10th country. Uh, and those two countries represent what we're looking to build. So it took a little time as far as getting around and things like that. So um, that's what I honestly just want to share with everyone, uh, family. So what I want to do is just open up some general questions. And remember, family, I was keeping this in a situation of it being a public recording so I can share on YouTube. So if you don't want to show your face, just turn off your uh, video. If you want to change your name or do anything, that's fine. I don't want... Uh, you know, you don't feel like we put you out there. Uh, so um, unmute yourself and just ask your questions or anything that you want to reason with and we'll close and uh, get those emails out for us to continue the other part of our conference call since we went over because Richard was dropping incredible knowledge. And I saw a message, uh, you're going to have a community in Tanzania. We're going to have a lot of things in Tanzania, but it's like you don't want to run your mouth and start talking big like some people. And then when things don't work out, then you know, people turn against you. So Let's be real with ourselves and build what we need to build in Ghana. Uh, me going to Tanzania and also going back to the Gambia, it's going there to do field research and kind of just, you know, just, uh, you know, do what I, I call just underground research and process things. And uh, yes, I know that we have folks in the diaspora that's there doing certain things and I appreciate the energy and I like what they're doing and things like that. But it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm looking to connect with any of them and I'm not trying to just be rude or disrespectful or mean or anything. I'm not saying that. Based on everything that we have talked about, you see how we move in a, you know what I'm saying, we move in a different kind of unit from, you know, and not trying to separate ourselves. It's just that we have to, some of us have to operate on the highest level of just professionalism and organization and things like that. And it's not like we're just saying that we're better than any other group of people. I just basically want people to step their game up before we do every, uh, sorry, before we do anything. Because after the fall of Garvey Town, Garvey Town is dead, 16 years of failure. Um, you know, and all the lessons that we have learned and still trying to get back so much of our money as far as, um, you know, a refund that we're supposed to get back, uh, which I've literally just credited everyone from my end, which is 
people say that's unfair. It's just it's unfair to me, but that's never the point. The, the point is I have to also be accountable. I have to be accountable for the situation, which I literally showed my accountability by getting Richard and Quabin and us working a new land deal also and making sure everybody got credit that whoever needed a refund, get refund. Uh, but uh, literally just want uh, folks to know that um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm done giving any of our people the benefit of the doubt anymore. It's like, don't come with me all the talking and the presentation, come with me and show me your documentation, be about your business and then we can talk and work together. I'm here, you know, our space is here for video calls and meeting people and things like that. And if they can't live up to those things, then we're just done with them. It's just because you have to have a whole lot to lose for us to do things with you. And that was my issue with Garvey Town. Those losers had nothing to lose because they were already just behind on everything and they've already didn't plan it out. Uh, and they, them and other people look at us from the diaspora as their victims or people that they say, hey, you know what, let's get them to just do all the things that we need uh, them to do and build our, com uh, build our community based on our dictatorships and rules and laws and everything. And let's not give them legal paperwork so we can kind of have, have control of them and their property. That is wickedness, you know? So that's why you see hashtag Garvey Town is dead because if you're gonna represent our people and use uh, Honorable Marcus uh, Garvey name and represent that you're gonna build a community and things like that, you better step your game up. And if, you, you know, if you're gonna do something and we're not involved in that's, that's kind of your business, but if you're gonna take our money and not represent us, you're gonna have drama. So uh, I apologize to anyone if I sound childish by doing the stuff I'm doing. I'm not specifically making videos of them, but I'm also interjecting information in the videos that we do to literally educate all of us on what we're supposed to do when we do land investment or we decide to commit to certain groups. So Richard, the legal person in Ghana, literally just explained that whole process the last two hours. And Kwabna also explained that process. So I advise anyone out there that's watching this uh, video, if people are not willing to lay it out for you and, and show the documentation and everything, don't trust them, don't do business with them, don't waste your time because you do have a whole lot of wolf in sheep clothing out there. And they make people like myself and those of us that's ready for the revolution look bad. And I'm just sick and tired of our people getting in the way of our progress. And that's why I'm only doing business with those of us that are ready. So when any of those other groups in any of those countries uh, step their game up, I can do business with them because sometimes I look at people's website and what they're doing and it's just, a flow of this unprofessionalism on organizations. And then I look at, this is why we don't own much of anything in America because uh, we don't want to bring our A game and we just want to just wing it. Uh, Cause I mean, I can't uh, tell you the amount of phone calls I get here at my office about, you know, since I told people that I'm available and I, they, people call me and I just basically do one of those things where I just ask everybody to be honest with me and just tell me everything. And then I can just be honest with them also and things like that. And at the end of the day, is most of our folks don't have it organized or anything. So I'm hoping that we can just use this energy to really build a strength of us just taking it to that level to where other people say, hey, you know what, let's reach out to these brothers and sisters and let's also or follow their foundation of lead of organizations. Uh, because my goal now is to, to step the bar so high up, it, it's either, you know, like they say, you know, either you, you, you swim or sink, to set up to where folks have to swim by either just stepping the game up and doing the right thing and building us up or this uh, sink by being the, the failures that the, 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 the failures that they are and trying to convince us that there's something else. So um, I'm putting this out there to my brothers and sisters. Make sure you check all of these people out that claim that they're building communities and they're doing this and they're doing that. And I'm not here to point anybody out or say anything bad about anyone other than the, the, the criminals, Garvey Town and, uh, and then, you know, the unorganization of Fianca uh, and things like that. I don't have certain things personal to Fianca because they didn't take any of our money as far as our, our group, but they did mislead and confuse a lot of people that could have been potential repatriates that could have built incredible operation. And one of the things that we have to look at, and also family, if anyone is just burned out by this and has to move on, I'm fine with it. I do understand, but after this, go through certain things for a recorded call. Uh, so, you know, you know, so one of the, the reasons why we just have to just honestly go through this is this over and over again, family, is because this may be our last stand to do this, right? And right now we have a momentum of energy of people that are coming through. So let's just uh, make it happen. So I just want to uh, know if anybody have any questions about anything I've talked about, Richard have talked about, or Kwabna has talked about, and then I'll just close by uh, just, um, you, know, you know, I'll just close after that. I have a question. 
should, when should we send in our $1,100? Uh, you can send it out once we get documentation up, uh, from the Lands Commission as far as the invoice and those things. Uh, I don't want to start collecting money from everyone. I just, back to what I was talking about, I want to be complete, real, and transparent by creating those things in documented forms and get the uh, money, get the, uh, the, the estimate uh, from uh, the surveyor. So Richard is going to be working on those things. Uh, that way we can just have it documented. And uh, everything that we're doing, everyone is legally bound. So uh, any one of us, um, every, all of us is aware that we have to play nice and play fair and be honest because like if, if probably gonna give me a price or somebody give me a price, I'm not just gonna accept anything. I'm gonna call a bunch of people in Ghana and get prices and things like that and things like that. So, you know, we kind of keep ourselves accountable as much as possible. Just like when I send you any invoice or any information, check it out and let me know uh, everything looks good and ask questions. Make sure that, uh, every, you know, we, I want to make sure that we all get our money's worth out of everything as a people. And because people have literally look at us, uh, most of us are, whether we're born in America or not, we all live in America. So America is considered a country with, it's a full of rich black people. And, and I'm like, you know, you tell other people that, you know, it's not like that. I mean, you may be misrepresented by, you seeing certain videos or certain things that's going on, but you know, those of us are coming as hardworking people that, you know, uh, we work hard for our money and we want to get the most of our money. You know, we want to do business on the highest level, but we don't want to just be milked 